Hi, it's Dr. Smith from Wigston Central Surgery with another video to help us work well together to give you the best care that we can. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how we as a practice manage referrals and letters and then deal with some frequently asked questions that we get on this topic. So when you come to see one of the clinicians at the practice, it might be that we want to refer you on to a service at the hospital or elsewhere in the community to give you the care that you need for your problem. Now let me just quickly talk you through the process of how this works. Historically, it used to be that we would write to a consultant or to a clinician that we knew and we would ask them to provide the care for you. But these days, things are done a lot more centrally. So if, for example, I'm referring you to see a gut specialist, I fill in a questionnaire for them with all the problems that you have and then they decide who will be the best person for you to see. That's the way that the hospital want the service to work and that's the way that the service is interacting between primary care and secondary care at the moment. And that's the same across to almost every specialty. We would give them the information and they would decide when they can offer you an appointment. Now quite often what happens is they will send you through in the post a number of options where you might be able to be seen and then they want you to book the appointment at the time that is convenient for you. So we send off the referral, you get a letter through the post and then you can make the appointment to be seen. As well as sending referrals out, we get a lot of letters coming in about a whole variety of things. They can pretty much be about anything to do with your health and your healthcare. If you've been in hospital or seen a consultant in clinic or seen any other healthcare professional such as a physio, or a speech and language therapist or a dietitian, then we'll get a letter about it. Also, if you have any interactions with 111 or out of hours GPs, then we'll also get a letter to inform us about your care. Now, when a letter comes into the practice, it's screened by our administrative team to, to make sure that it's passed on to the most appropriate person. Sometimes they might go to our practice pharmacist if medication changes are needed, or if there's a question about a health issue, it might go on to the doctor. Certainly, if we see a letter and we know that we're going to want to follow you up about it, we'll get in touch. Now, please be patient with us as we screen all these letters from a whole variety of places and we try to make sure that off the back of these letters, we give you the care that you need. Here are some frequently asked questions that relate to referrals and letters. The first one is this, does it matter which doctor's name is on my referral letter? We're aware that when hospital doctors write letters to the practice, they usually just choose one of the partner's names to put at the top because they're not necessarily sure which doctor has actually referred the patient in the first place. But it doesn't actually matter which doctor's name is there because when the letter is passed on to one of us, it will go to the person who sent the referral in the first place or the person who's been dealing with that problem. So don't worry if the referral letter at the top says, Dear Dr. Shafu and you've been seeing Dr. Sardin. You can rest assured it goes through to the most appropriate doctor. Who should I speak to if something on my letter doesn't make sense? All of the letters that are sent from hospital should be written in a manner that's easy for a patient to understand. But we do understand that sometimes medical terminology is used and that might be difficult to understand. Or there might simply be things on there that don't appear clear and you want some clarification. Now we would be happy to go through a letter with you, but be aware that we're not the specialists and there might be things on there that we would need further clarification of. So if there's something that isn't clear, the best person to speak to usually is the specialist who sent the letter in the first place. They should have left a number on the letter and if there's anything you want clarifying, we'd encourage you to give that number a ring in the first instance. But if you're struggling to get the help that you need, then let us know. Can you refer me to the person who saw me last time? Well, as I mentioned earlier, when we do referrals, we don't actually have a choice anymore of the specific person who we refer to. But let's say, for example, that you'd seen a specific surgeon who'd done one knee replacement and you'd be keen to see the same person again to see if they'd done the other knee. We could certainly mention it in the referral letter that you'd seen that person before, but it is up to the department in the hospital to choose who you see and which appointments are available to you. Will we get a letter when you get one? When a healthcare professional sends us a letter, they usually send you a copy as well. And that's right, because it's your care at the end of the day and it's important that you're as informed as you can be about the care that you're receiving. Now, patients often ask us, do we get a letter before you? The answer is no. Normally, we hear from them exactly the same time as you do. The only time we might hear sooner is if there's an urgent medical problem that they feel we need to pick up from them and they might get in touch with us more urgently to make sure that that happens. And if that does, then we'll be getting in touch with you anyway. 
How will we let you know if you need to have a follow-up from a letter? Well, if a letter gets passed on to me and having read it, I'm pretty certain I want to see you again. Then one of our reception staff will be in touch in order to make an appointment where we can talk through this letter and follow up anything that we need to. What I would say is this, if you know that your medication has been changed and that change is listed in that letter, it might be worthwhile you making an appointment anyway for us to make sure that your records are up to date and that you're getting the medication that you need. So I hope that's been a helpful video on the topic of referrals and letters. If there's anything else that you think would be helpful for us to explain further about how we do things in the practice, then feel free to send us an email to the address below and we'll see if we can explain more about what we do. We hope these videos are helpful in helping us work well together to provide you with the best care that we can. Take care.